So right now, we're going to move next to the um, BE Tech Talk portion of the program. And we are so pleased to welcome um, another uh, proven expert from the world of tech. Uh, he's Michael Seibel. He's a partner with Y Combinator. Uh, it's one of the premier accelerator and venture uh, capital organizations in the technology space. Michael has been involved uh, with several of the most important uh, companies in the video space, including uh, being a co-founder and CEO for Justin.tv and also for SocialCam. Now, SocialCam was acquired by Autodesk in 2012 for $60 million. And um, Twitch TV, which was acquired by Amazon in 2014, that deal was worth $970 million. Um, so please welcome uh, today's uh, featured speaker for BE Tech Talk, uh, uh, Y Combinator's Michael Seibel. How's it going, everybody? So, <laughs> um, so before I start, um, one thing I wanted to tell everyone was that I don't want to sugarcoat what I'm going to talk about. Um, when I got to the Valley, it was actually 10 years ago this week, and a lot of people said some things that I'm sure all of you entrepreneurs have heard. That sounds like a great idea. Keep in touch. Let me know when X, Y, and Z happens. We're so excited about what you're working on. Um, please send me an email and no response, no anything. And um, it took me a really long time to figure out what that meant. All of those things mean I don't want to invest in your company. And um, one of the things that I realized when I started working at YC is that um, we need to decode this information for founders. Um, investors are going to be polite because they're afraid that maybe one day you'll be Facebook. But unfortunately, as a result, um, this place can be confusing because you hear one message that sounds positive, but it's really negative. So a better way of thinking about this game is it's like the NBA. Think of this like the NBA. Most people will not be successful. And an NBA owner is interested in a player not as a friend, but as a way to make money. This place is not a place that's built to help you realize your dreams. Uh, realizing your dreams is an opportunity you have here, but the reason why the place exists is because people want to make money. So with that being said, I wanted to give you straight away what they're actually looking for, and so you can compare what you have to what they're looking for. Um, a lot of people talk about investors and that they pattern match. Uh, this is the pattern. And um, already, people who look like me and you guys, we don't match it. So um, we have to do even better matching it in other ways. So I'm going to go through the pattern really fast. And then I want to leave a lot of time for questions, because I'm sure you guys are going to have some. Uh, so yeah, how do you start a tech startup? First thing, um, prerequisites. Um, people are looking for teams of two to four people, teams of people who have known each other in the past. So if you just met your founder last week, raising money this week is probably going to be a little bit harder. They want teams that have technical talent on the founding team. They want teams that feel comfortable giving a lot of equity to the other members of the team. If you're the CEO and you hold 95% of the equity, I think you've recruited a shitty team. If you're a CEO and you split your equity equally or close to equally, I think you really think you need these people and you've recruited well and you're willing to work with them as partners. I tend to tell people they need to have a year's worth of cash. Um, when you're younger, this is a lot easier. This is like a year's worth of cash to like live with two, three, four roommates and like eat ramen. But you need to have some money saved. And you need to be willing to quit your job. Um, one of the things we say at YC all the time is that if you're not in 100%, how do you expect us to be? So these prerequisites are really, really, really hard. Um, but it's the pattern that people are looking for. So what I would tell you is take all of your genius, take all of the genius you're applying to the product, 
and start thinking about how can you get yourself set up in this type of way. So the second thing is the idea. And I'm, I wanted to be really clear to mention the team first. Um, ideas change, ideas are a commodity. And the lesson that's being taught out there in the world is just simply wrong. It's not you come up with a genius idea and you get money and then you build something. That's just a lie. Anyone who's saying that is just lying to you. Um, every single idea that gets into YC, we've read applications with three or four people with the same exact idea who didn't. So the idea is secondary. Who you're working with is primary. Um, when you think about what you want to work on, I tend to tell people, brainstorm problems with people who you might want to be your co-founders. So you don't have to have your team all baked before you start, but it's helpful to brainstorm problems with the people who you might want to be your co-founders. Because when you all get excited, bam, the same people you're brainstorming with can be the people that you start a company with. And I said problems because ideas are solutions. And the vast majority of time, the first solution that you release won't be good. And that's OK. Good investors are completely happy with that. But if you're not passionate about the problem that you're solving, you're not going to be coming up with the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth idea that helps address it. So start with the problem. Um, I also say it's helpful to start with problems that occur more often. Um, you have so many more opportunities to help your customer if they have your problem every day than if they have your problem every month or every year. Market. Um, one question that every investor wants to know is how big is your market? Um, and there's a very simple answer why. Um, they don't make money unless you build a billion dollar company and it's hard to build a billion dollar company in a small market. So there's really two ways of doing this, and it's really easy. Um, if you're building a company in a space that already exists, let's say you're building an online small business bank, all you have to do is go look up online how big small business banking is. Bam, you know your market size. If you're building something that never existed before, what you have to do is figure out how many potential customers there are, how much you're going to charge per year, and bam, there's your market size. This isn't rocket science, but it's one of those sneaky things that can disqualify you without you really knowing. Because if you say a number that's too small, people think you're going to build a company that's too small, and they can't make money. It's that simple. The next is uh, legal. Um, everyone has a friend or an uncle or someone who's a lawyer, and you're going to go to them for advice on legal, and that's actually the exact wrong move. Um, Unfortunately, like funds are set up in such a way that they can only invest in companies that are set up in a very specific way. And uh, you shouldn't have to be an expert at that. So there's a website called clerky.com, and they just incorporate you the right way. And don't think about it. And you might have some friend or someone who's like, yeah, well, but for you, it's better to do you know, an S corp or a G corp or whoever, whatever else. No. Um, you'll just have to spend even more money changing it later. So just do it this way. Every YC company does it this way, and we've funded over 1,500 companies. Um, your MVP, minimum viable product. Um, once you have that team and once you have that product, that I problem that you want to solve, this is what you get to work on. And let's be clear. You don't start with this. You don't say, let me hire someone to build an MVP and prove that there's something good here and then hire my team. Um, I, there are seven different reasons why that's a bad idea, but the most important one to be fast is because most investors will not invest. And so if you need their money, most of them will look at an outsourced development team and say, no, thank you. Um, when you think about your minimum viable product, this is the first opportunity you have to get something in customers' hands, and it's very scary. A lot of people delay this because they think, if I release something that sucks, I'll never be able to get my business off the ground. And in fact, like some business gurus talk about this, it's complete bullshit. Um, very few of you remember the day that Google launched. Very few of you remember the day that Amazon lost or the day that Facebook launched. And those guys are doing pretty well. So just get anything in your customers' hands. If you're solving a big enough problem, 
that their customers have often, they will use whatever piece of crap you release because it's better than nothing. And then from that point forward, you'll learn what they like and what they don't, and you'll make it better. It's very scary to do this, but hey, doing a startup is scary, so just do it. This is what we tell YC startups. You're nothing until you launch. Um, I don't want to hear about your idea. I don't want to hear about your great strategy. I don't want to hear about your delusions of grandeur. I want to hear, have you launched? Then we can have a conversation. Because nowadays, launching is significantly less expensive. And if you did a good job recruiting a team with a technical co-founder, launching is basically how much rent costs and how much ramen costs. That's launching. So get out there. One of the things I always try to tell founders is that you want to own the leverage. You don't want to give the investor the leverage. If you tell me as an investor that you can't launch until you have my money, now I have all the leverage. I can take my time. I can go on vacation. If you tell me we're already launched, well, now I got to pay attention because the next time you talk to me, you might be growing and the price might go up. The next time you talk to me after that, you might be out of my price range. I might have missed a great deal. So by launching, you put fear into me. And fear is a great way to get someone to take you seriously and potentially invest. Way better than love. Way, way better than love. <laughs> um, growth. The second that you launch every week that you're not growing, um, you're dying. And so don't think about this as some kind of complicated setup. We have to do a lot of prep work and a lot of extra stuff to prepare yourself to grow. A startup is constantly in the state of failing. So you might as well grow every week. You will never get ahead of your technical debt. You will never get ahead of your operational problems. You never get ahead of your personnel problems. The bigger you are, the more problems you will have, guaranteed. So you might as well grow. Um, also, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was that growth is the number one thing to help a startup's culture. Everyone wants to be on a winning team, and a winning team grows every week. The next question I always ask people are, are people talking about your company? Um, you should be doing your own PR early to get people talking about your company. You should not be hiring people early to do your PR. The CEO is the best PR person for an early stage startup. So go talk to your friends who've gotten covered. If you're not in a startup community, get to a startup community. Pitch reporters real news and be really nice. Um, don't hire a PR firm. Um, I have personally spent over half a million dollars on PR firms before I was ready for it. That money is gone. Don't be like me. There's a point where you should hire a PR firm, but I'll tell you, to be honest, 95% of startups never get to that point. So let's not talk about strategy for PR firms. Let's talk about you doing your own PR. Fundraising. If you do everything you've done before this, everything I've talked about before this, now you have some leverage. You've got a great team. You're solving a problem you know something about. That your customers have every day or every week. You've already launched your product, and you've gotten some growth. That's a much better way to go into a fundraising conversation. And the last thing is, ask for less money. It's kind of a weird thing, but um, you get more leverage the less money you need. And investors who like something will always want to put more money in. So this is a little bit counterintuitive, but like, always ask for less money than you need. Um, fundraising is not the first step in this presentation. It's one of the last ones. And if you've created your plan to require fundraising up front, what I'll tell you is change your plan. You can do that. You much rather go into the fundraising battle with all of this leverage, with all of this armor and all of these weapons than going without. And as I'm sure a lot of you guys, and certainly me, have gone out and fundraised when I don't have leverage, it's a big waste of time. So we're not going to go into fundraising problems. and. We're going to skip forward because I want to get to questions. So the last thing is YC. Um, 
What most people don't realize about YC is that um, it is a much different place than it was 10 years ago. We fund 100 to 120 companies every six months. Those companies are in many, many different industries. There's the traditional software and apps, but there's B2B companies, enterprise. We fund aerospace and satellite companies. We funded um, biotech companies. We funded healthcare companies. Also, we funded companies who haven't written a single line of code, all the way to companies that have over $20 million in annual revenue. There's basically no point in time for any early stage startup that YC isn't something they should be considering. Also, a lot of people think YC is very hard to get into. Um, I want to defeat that stereotype. Basically, if you have a serious application and you're taking these steps, you have a one out of six chance of being interviewed at YC. One out of six. It's not that hard. People just like you guys get into YC every six months. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is our diversity. Um, if I measure it against what I think is optimal, it sucks. Um, if I measure it against the valley, which is really horrible to measure against, it's pretty good. Um, so if you look at YC, uh, about 15% of our companies will have either a black or, I'm sorry, will have either a black or Hispanic founder, and about 20% of our companies will have a female founder. Um, at YC, this is something that we work on a lot, and I have to tell you that when you look at the room full of founders at YC, um, you will see people who look like you, and that wasn't always the case. So, with that being said, um, I'd love to open up for questions. It looks like we have five minutes, and maybe we can squeeze a little bit more in. Who wants to go first? Hi, I'm Teresa, the data scientist at Airbnb. Uh, you just touched on diversity, and recently there was a YC founder who did a long medium post about raising money and feeling as though he was discriminated against. Um, how is YC and how are you personally helping to sort of change the landscape so that people don't come away feeling that way? So um, this might not be a popular answer, but I'll tell you what it is. Um, I want every minority founder that goes to YC to be in the top 20% of the batch. I want every minority founder, when they go into that investor conversation, to have such a good team, so much growth, such a big market, that the investor looks like an idiot if they let race get in the way of making an investment. To me, um, we need to see minority founders creating great companies for these investors to completely remove their prejudice. And so in order to do that, I've got to make sure I'm out there recruiting every day these founders. And so what sucks is that I can't invest, I can't um, change those conversations in the room. Um, I talked to that founder, I found out what happened, and I can't go back and repair it. But what I would argue is that it was my fault that he didn't go into that conversation with enough ammo that that investor had to put his blinders on and whatever he was thinking about and really take a serious look at the company. Hi, my name is Darren Carter from Ernst & Young. Um, my question to you is, are there any problems worth solving that you see um, as a Y Combinator partner that can be specifically addressed by you know, a diverse group of young, talented people um, that we see today? I mean, that's like such a funny question. I mean, can't every problem be better addressed by a diverse group of people? Yeah, right? <laughs> um, to me, the way I think about this, and it's funny, because I just got back um, from Lagos, Nigeria, and I saw it there more distinctly. To me, the reason why I like recruiting a diverse set of founders is because they have lived a different set of problems. The company application that I always hate at YC is the four Google engineers who grew up in the rich suburbs who are quitting Google because they want to solve the problem of after uh, working, I didn't like the food in the cafeteria, so where should I go for dinner? 
Um, that's not a problem that moves the country forward. Um, I think startups have the power to move the country forward, but only if their founders are actually wanting to solve the big problems in the country. And unfortunately, minority founders disproportionately feel the big problems in the country. So that's why I want to recruit them. Um, good afternoon. My name is oh, my name is Shirley Hussar. I'm the CEO of Story.com. I have a question. Um, can you name five companies that you have funded that are succeeding and where they're placing? And then my second question has to do with seed funding. You'd mentioned that there are people who have startups that have done um, no MVP and they're funded. What is the price range from start to your highest investment? Um, I will do better. I will tell you about five minority founders that have gone through YC that I've personally given checks to. Um, just to make it hit the point um, even harder. So Thinair, which is a uh, enterprise security company. Um, Afrostream, which is a Netflix for black content. Uh, Jopwell, which is a diversity recruiting platform. Um, Walker and Company, which you might know, <laughs> they make Bevel. <laughs> Um, Flip, which is a um, right now a sneaker trading marketplace, but will be a luxury goods trading marketplace. Uh, Paystack, which is Stripe for Africa. That's six. Um, and then in terms of um, what you need for, for seed, um, this goes back to team. It's uh, very, very hard if you um, don't have the core pieces of your team that allow them to build your product. Um, we've seen companies that go th into YC and they've raised absolutely no money and they've built the products completely with the team. Um, we've seen companies who've come through YC and they've already raised some money because they had a product and they had a team that can build it. Um, it always goes back to that point. It always goes back to do you have the elements in your founding team to build the product? And let's be clear, not to build the perfect product, just to build the first crappy version that gets some users. Um, and then in terms of YC, what we do is we provide funding. So we invest $120,000 in every company that gets into YC. Uh, we provide support, and then we host a demo day. Uh, collectively, the 100 plus companies that participate in YC go on to raise about 150 to $200 million of angel funding in our demo day and the couple months afterwards. So. Um, we think that gives them a great head start to go out there and take on what they need to take on. All right, one more. Hi, uh, my name is Bridget Coates. I uh, had a business that launched last year, Super Fan Chase. It's an online scavenger hunt. Um, so when you said just launch, I was really excited about that. That was words of inspiration. Great. Um, but I'm trying to develop it a, a little differently and make it more um, online friendly and the question is I don't really know that market um, there's not a company that's doing that that's similar so can you explain a little bit more on what to do um, and how to find that um, what I'll tell you is this when I started my company um, it was started as an online reality TV show that was streamed live to the web um, the founders were 21, 22, 22, and 23. We knew nothing about video, barely good at doing web programming, and certainly didn't know anything about entertainment because we were horrible entertainers. Um, just do it. Like, if you're perfectly comfortable with the first version sucking, you have to trust that you're going to learn more that by doing than talking to experts. Um, the most common piece of advice that I tell a YC founder is get it in front of your customers. And you've already launched something, so you shouldn't have any fear about launching the next thing. Um, but like when you seek expert advice, you're basically asking somebody to be brave for you. And it's impossible to do. They're gonna tell you something, then they're gonna go on with their lives. And so the number one person you get advice from is your customer. And the number one way you get advice from them is you show them a product. 
Um, that's why on my slide about releasing MVPs, I always talk about like, yeah, two months to build an MVP is great, but two weeks is even better. If you can build the simplest, easiest thing possible and get in front of your customers, they will guide you. So let's remove this idea that there exists these business gurus out there that will tell you what to do. Um, I can tell you how to convince investors to invest. I cannot tell you how to convince your customers to like your product. That's your genius. Um, and we know it together when your thing grows. So that's my best advice. All right. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. This is a lot of fun.